Alexander Everett Kawilarang was an Indonesian freedom fighter, military commander, and founder of Kesko TT, what would become the Indonesian Special Forces Unit Kopassus. However, in 1958 he resigned his post as military attaché to the United States to join the separatist Promesta movement where he encountered Kopassus as his opponent. His involvement in Promesta damaged his promising military career, but he remained popular and active in the armed forces community. Kawilarang was born in Batavia on February 23, 1920. His father, Alexander Herman Hermanus Kawilarang, was a major in the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army. His mother was Nelly Betsy Moggett. Both parents were from the Minahasa region in North Sulawesi. Kawilarang enjoyed comprehensive European education style that included attending the Dutch secondary school, in Bondo. Around 1940, he attended the Dutch Military Academy or Koninklijke Militaire Academie that was moved to Bondo, because of the German occupation of the Netherlands. His classmates included A. H. Nasushin and T. B. Simatupong. After graduating from the academy, he was stationed in Magalong as platoon commander and assigned back to Bandung as an instructor. During the Japanese occupation, Manadanese, Ambanese, and Indo people were often randomly arrested during raids due to their perceived closeness to the Dutch. Many were severely tortured by the Kempeitai. Kawilarang was tortured several times by the Japanese in 1943 and 1944. He survived, but suffered lifelong disability in his right arm and numerous scars. Kawilarang recalls, someone in the warung, food stall, said, Japan will grant the Indonesian people its freedom. I could not ascribe any sense at all to such small talk. Impossible. That was my opinion. But I remained silent. I didn't feel much for more torture, a news. Paper wrote, Japan is an old friend. Lies. I thought. Kawilarang slowly developed an appreciation for the rhetoric of the charismatic Indonesian nationalist Sukarno and became strongly convinced that the time for an independent Indonesian state had arrived. In 1944, Kawilarang's father was presumed killed while he was a POW on the Japanese cargo ship Junyomaru. The ship was carrying 3,000 Mennonese, Ambanese, Indo European, Dutch, British, Australian, American POWs and over 3,500 Javanese Ramusha when it was sunk by the British submarine HMS Tradewind. Kawilarang recalls being told about the tragedy, I prayed in silence. I did not cry. The Japanese had given me enough practice in digesting pain and suffering in silence. For the remainder of the war, Kawilarang worked in several private capacities in Sumatra, the last of which was as chief of a rubber factory in Tanjung Karong in South Sumatra. Kawilarang accepting transfer of sovereignty in Tapanuli after the proclamation of Indonesian independence, Kawilarang returned to Jakarta and enlisted in the newly formed Indonesian army. In October 1945, he was assigned to the staff of the 1st Command of West Java or Komam and I Jawa Barat in Purwakarta and given the rank of major. In January 1946, he became chief of staff of the Bogor Infantry Regiment of the 2nd Division. In August 1946, he became the commander of the 2nd Brigade of the newly formed Silawangi Division and was promoted to lieutenant colonel. He was in command of the brigade during Operation Product, which was the first Dutch military aggression against the Republic of Indonesia. He also commanded the 1st Brigade for a brief period when the brigade was transferred to Yogyakarta. In mid-1948, Kawilarang was included in a contingent of government and military officials to Bukitinggi in West Sumatra. The move was in anticipation of a second Dutch military aggression and to allow the formation of an Indonesian emergency government outside of Java. Kawilarang was assigned to lead the 7th Sub-Territorial Command for Tapanuli in the southern region of East Sumatra. One of his tasks was to stop the infighting between factions of the army in the area. When the Indonesian government in exile was enacted because of Operation Krai, Kawilarang was also appointed as deputy military governor of the same region in Sumatra with Ferdinand Lumben Tobing appointed as military governor. In December 1949, Kawilarang was appointed as territorial commander of North Sumatra in anticipation of the Dutch recognition of Indonesian sovereignty after the Dutch-Indonesian Round Table Conference. During his career, Kawilarang was also territorial commander of two other important military districts, Military Territory 7, East Indonesia 7 slash Indonesia Timor, now Kodam 14 slash Asanuddin, in April 1950 and Military Territory 3, West Java 3 slash Jawa Barat, now Kodam 3 slash Silawangi, in November 1951. 
Kawilarang and Soharto Kawilarang and Slamet Rijadi discussing strategy and Amban having just turned 30 and already promoted to colonel, Kawilarang was given command of the first post-independence expeditionary force in April 1950. He was ordered to quell a revolt by a company of former Nile that including Andy Aziz and Dutch army soldiers or Kanan Kliki Ledger in Makassar, South Sulawesi. The expeditionary force consisted of several brigades, including those that were led by Suharto and Yop Waruyu. On August 8, 1950, fighting ceased after negotiations between Kawilarang and Dutch General Shafelar. Regarding Kawilarang's relationship with Suharto during the expedition, Kawilarang is said to have struck Suharto due to a blunder by the troops commanded by Suharto. In at least one interview with Kawilarang, he denied striking Suharto, but did state that he had to admonish him. Around the same time of the military operation in Makassar, Kawilarang also organized forces against the separatist RMS movement in the Moluccas. The fighting was more ferocious, because the opposition were well-trained Moluccan former Nile soldiers including the Green Caps. Although better trained and renowned for their fighting skills, the resistance of the Moluccan soldiers was eventually put down in November 1950. Let. Colonel Slamet Riyadi who was the commander of the government forces in the Maluku sector and an important participant during the offensive was killed on the final day of the campaign. The military engagements in Maluku prompted Kawalarang to establish what would later become Indonesia's Special Forces Kopassus. Some acknowledge that the idea of a specialized commando unit was the brainchild of both Kawalarang and Riyadi. On April 15, 1952. Kawilarang founded the 3rd Territorial Army Commando Unit or Xatuan Commando 10 Territorium 3 when he was Territorial Commander of Military Territory 3 in Bondo. He asked Mok. Ijin DNB, a former Nile commando, to train the unit. In 1999, a year before his death, Kawilarang became an honorary member of Kopassus and received a red beret during a ceremony commemorating the 47th anniversary of the establishment of Kopassus. In August 1956, Major General Nasushin as Chief of Staff of the Army appointed Kawalarang to the post of military attaché to the United States. It has been argued that the purpose of the appointment was to remove Kawalarang from the influential post of Commander of Military Territory 3, West Java and replace him with an officer who was less of a threat or even pro-Nasushin. A similar move by Nasushin was to replace Commander of the East Indonesia Military Territory from Yop Waruyu to Venge Samuel. Just a day before the transfer ceremony, Kawilarang ordered the arrest of the foreign minister Ruslan Abdul Ghani due to his alleged corrupt activities. This move was backed by Zulkifli Lubis, an opponent of Nasushin. Nasushin rescinded Kawilarang's order and Abdul Ghani was released. Regarding the appointment to Washington, Kawilarang himself stated that the position was offered by Nasushin, because Kawilarang had wanted to obtain more military knowledge outside the country. Because of continued grievances toward the central government in Java due to, among other things, the lack of regional autonomy, on March 2, 1957, Venge Samuel declared the Universal Struggle Charter or Piagam Perwang in Samasta. The movement center was Manado and Minahasa in North Sulawesi where Kawilarang was from. The movement allied itself with a separate movement based. In Sumatra called the Revolutionary Government of the Republic of Indonesia or Pimarinta Revolution or Republic Indonesia. Kawilarang had been monitoring the situation from Washington and had concluded that the central government in Java and its mismanagement was to blame for the regional crisis. In March 1958, he informed the Indonesian ambassador to the U.S., Merkoto, that he would be leaving for North Sulawesi. He left his post on March 22, 1958. Kawilarang was the only army officer who was not immediately dishonorably discharged for their participation in Promesta and PRRI. He had not fully accepted the PRRI side of the movement that he thought was aligned to religious extremists, and Jakarta had thus hoped that he would change his mind. Although he declined the position of commander-in-chief of all PRRI Promesta forces, he remained with Promesta and became commander of the Promesta Armed Forces. The rebellion lasted until 1961 when government forces managed to gain an upper hand on the Promesta troops. The government forces were under the command of many officers whom Kawilarang had previously fought on the same side with. The conflict was concluded peacefully through the efforts of F.J. Tumbalaka. Several ceremonies took place in April and May 1961 where the Indonesian government officially accepted back the Promesta troops. Kawilarang participated in the ceremony on 14 April that was attended by the Deputy Commander of the Indonesian Army, Major General Hidayat, and also Brigadier General Ahmad Yani both of whom Kawilarang knew well. Later in his life, 
he reflected on the virtues of camaraderie between man-at-arms and nobility among officers. During post-war reunions with his former Dutch classmates at the Bondome School for Officers he concludes, camaraderie is deeply rooted in their soul. I still wonder about the camaraderie between our own Indonesian cadets. In times of war combat is a duty. Camaraderie and humanity are a whole different chapter. I am convinced our state philosophy Pancasila breathes the same virtue. Promesta troops including Kawilarang were given amnesty by President Sukarno on June 22, 1961. However, due to his role in Promesta, he never received military distinctions like his contemporaries except for becoming an honorary member of Kopassus in 1999. Kawilarang resigned from his military position, but remained influential in the retired military society called Perna Arawan and the Veterans Association or Pepebri. Putting his fighting years behind him, he made amends with all his former opponents and even visited the Netherlands several times for reunions with Nile pensioners before his death in 2000. Among the business activities that Kawilarang was involved in after returning to civilian life was as deputy manager of Jakarta Racing Management that maintained the racetrack at Pulau Moss in Jakarta and an organized horse racing events. The annual national equestrian and horse racing competition is called the A. Kawilarang Memorial Cup. On June 6, 2000, Kawilarang died at Chipto Mangam Kusomo Hospital in Jakarta. He was laid in the Soderman Room at the Silawangi Military District Command Headquarters in Bandung that was followed by a full military ceremony led by Major General Slamet Supriyadi, Silawangi Military District Commander. Kawilarang was buried in the Sakutra Hero Cemetery in Bandung. Kawilarang was married twice. He married Petronella Isabella Van Emden on October 16, 1952. They divorced in 1958. The couple had two children, Isabella Nelly Kawilarang and Alexander Edwin Kawilarang. Kawilarang's second wife was Henny Olga Pondog. They had one child, Pearl Hazel Kawilarang. Kawilarang's son, Edwin, is head of the Perna Arawan organization FP and, as such, part of the so-called Keluarga Besar Perna Arawan, which translates to English as the greater family of ex-military. Under the new order or Ord Baru, he also was an official at Bimantara, a company owned by Soharto's son Bombong Trihatmadho. Edwin was a member of the People's Consultative Assembly from 1997 to 2004, the Regional Representative Council from 2004 to 2009, and the People's Representative Council from 2009 to 2014. In each position, he represented constituents from the province of North Sulawesi. Kawilarang's cousin, Don Moggett, died during an attempt to disarm a Japanese army depot in Lung Kong in 1946. Thanks for watching.